All right, so we're back. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, grab the next little piece here that I had uh, cut earlier. And I'm just gonna kind of freestyle or whatever, like a little, a little, a design <laughs> or something. Let's see. But first we need it. Let's get the center line going. So I'm gonna lay down this tape right in the middle, right here. go now I'm gonna cut that piece there that's our center line um, so pretty much right here let's just say we're gonna start something from the middle I'm not saying like you can come up with so many designs but it's just to get the idea of uh, because people are always asking, how do you do that? And I don't see that many videos on this stuff. So, uh, so I might as well just show you right here. All right. This is what we're, what we're left with. Not sure if it's going to be enough. But if not, not to worry. We, you know, we can always cut more tape. Let me see. So this is always the tricky part getting it to match, mirroring it to the other side. So right now we're just trying to mirror it as close as possible. Might not be exact, but I'm just kind of going to eyeball it. And I'll explain how you, there's a, there's some methods where you can get it where it's like pretty precise. There we go. You can see that right there. There we go. Better lighting. So some tips for you guys that want to uh, make sure you have like a, you know, nice uh, even size width on everything. I would recommend you to get uh, one of these uh, compasses here. I got this from Blick. I think the site's called like blickdick.com or something like that. Um, but yeah, just look them up, get this. I ended up um, pretty much getting the two pins at the end. Right, oh, there we go, let's see. Right there, but anyway. Um, so what I like to do is uh, check my lines, make sure that they're, the widths are even. So I make contact with the tapes, with the tips of this compass here. Right there. And then I go to the other side. And then I go, oh, there we go. They touch. They're cool. And you could do this on different, um, all the different sections. Right there. See, like right here, here, let me see. Or let's do this better. From this corner, the corner of the car, to that tape. Corner. Oh yeah. Pretty close, yeah. Not too crazy. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a, a method that you can use right there as well. Uh, there's also tape that you can lay out on the hood just to be like a guide. You know, so um, that right there will help you. A lot of people use that um, when they're painting real cars. All this stuff um, I learned from Armando Flores. He taught me throughout the years. Um, and then it's just practice over and over doing different uh, designs. Let's see. So let's say I have this, la this other piece I had cut and I can, you know, do a design. But then you'll start to notice this piece is too thick. It's too big to be inside because now... Let's just say I run it right here, right? Say I have that right there. And let me cut, let me cut this piece. Okay, there we go. So now you see the design and the hood right there. But now everything's, 
it's it's just like it's too thick it's too even and you know you, there has to be a little bit more character you got to go with something thinner um let me take off one of these these pieces of tape that i cut a long time ago that have been stuck on this piece of glass for i don't know how long and um with something like this that's a lot thinner this is a lot thinner compared to the other piece that I had, the previous one I was just using. So this one's too thick. So for this thinner one, with this one we could have a lot more fun uh, with some pattern design stuff. Let's see. Like you could run it on the inside. Like that. Where's the scissors? I keep mistakenly putting them somewhere else. Hope the lighting's not too dark for you guys. Apologize if it is. Let me see. Yeah, I messed up. Let me redo. All right. It's the good thing about this tape. You get second chances. There we go. Oh, and it's dead. There we go. Nice. So whatever you do on one side, do it on the other side too, so it matches. All right. So now you're starting to see more of a, a pattern design, something starting to form more and more. One thing I do want to point out though is uh, so right here we have the main piece that goes around the hood right and then we have these tapes that are going out and obviously they're going into the window uh, but as you could see it's like they even go over the big line when you cut these out you gotta make sure that it's cut out until it reaches that that outside line don't let it go over it or whatever don't run your pattern through it like that um, I've did I did that before on one of my first paint jobs and it doesn't look good at all like that's a that's a huge mistake um, and sometimes I see that in um, in some pattern work you know but it's one of those things people don't say nothing no one no one will say like hey you're not supposed to do that because obviously there's it's not like there's rules or anything to this but you want to kind of stay true to what the artists have been doing in the past uh, with with a lot of the, the lowrider style paint jobs and let's just say you don't, you know, you, you're not feeling this. Um, you could just take it apart. You don't have to, you know, take off the whole thing. You could take some of it just to see, like, what is it that you want to do. And maybe you want to wait it out. Maybe you go, you know what, I'm going to wait a bit on this and see where you go from there. There's also these, uh, these tools here that I like using. Um, these ones here, they have these like really small little round ball like tips on them. And I, I like using the, the like the smallest one. Oh wait, this is the smallest one. Bam, this is really tiny. The reason why I like using this is uh, let's just say uh, the tape's acting funny or I laid down the pattern kind of wrong or whatever. I can always like uh, move the tape. So let's say See how it's starting to like you could peel it or whatever, but you could you could shape it into something. You can you can still move it. So let's say I want to I'm gonna give it a radius right here, and it's gonna close out right there. But I'm like, oh man, the, the curve or something's not it's not looking good. I could go in here and kind of cur curve this out a little more without damaging the paint because it's round. And let's say it's starting to lift up. I could use this to press down on it too. Um, I got these over on eBay as a set. I think these are used uh, for the dolls too, for like their eyes, eye sockets and whatnot. I don't know. But those are some tools that I got. I can't remember the name right now, sorry. But I did find on eBay. If I find, I'm gonna try to search for the link. Um, what I had. Bam, sorry, got distracted right there. So there, there's a lot of stuff you can do, you know, just let your imagination, everything run wild. If you don't even like that center line, let's say, you know, you can always like remove that. It's going to pull those other ones. Watch. 
see what happens. Okay, so we still kind of kept it. So I could press it down with my finger or I could use my trusty little tool right here. There we go. So you see how that, even that switched it up right there.